Hello, everyone. Welcome to a special CUBE on the ground at VMware's corporate headquarters in Palo Alto. I'm John Furrier with the host of the, host of the CUBE, and we are here with Guido Appenzeller, who's the Chief Technology Strategy Officer of the Networking Security Business Unit at VMware. We're going to talk about cross-cloud security, networking, NSX, all the above. Welcome to our special. It's great to be here today. Thanks. Uh, we had great conversations with a lot of the uh, folks here today at the special uh, CUBE on the ground. Uh, at VMware, but one of the things that's coming up over and over again is the same theme we've been hearing over again, the Amazon Web Services relationship deal that Andy Jassy and Pat Gelsmith said highlights, puts the public light on your cloud strategy, which has been kind of in motion with cross cloud uh, for a while, the IBM deal earlier, but also at VMworld, Pat Gelsman was highlighting a lot of the success of NSX. Can yeah. you like tie all this together now? Where where are we right now? You have on-premise, you have AWS with VMware. How is this all how's it tied, fit together? How's it all fitting together right now to customers? What's the current pitch? Absolutely. So look, the, the cloud I think is the, it's the biggest structural transformation we've seen in IT for a long time. It's probably you know, the second time in the history of IT that we're really fundamentally changing how we operate right here. We're running, you know, the the good old days from workstations went to to client server and now we're going going to a cloud model. And and when I talk to our customers, they have a huge set of challenges when you move to the cloud, right? I mean, the, the, an average VMware customer at this point, I think is in 4.5 clouds, if I remember our survey data correctly, right? So then you're suddenly you're on Amazon, you're on Azure, you're maybe on Google, on, on IBM, you know, you have a VMware on-premises data center. And how, how do you connect them, right? How, how do you make sure that you don't get new silos? Because it's, the, the, the risk here is that you know, you, you build an Amazon team, they go to reInvent, they carry the Amazon backpack, right? And they, uh, they, they, you know, they understand the Amazon APIs. And then there's a second team that does the same thing for Azure, goes to the Microsoft conference, knows their APIs. And if, you know, you ever want to move an application across or, you know, move a team member across, it's really, really hard because it's, it's a completely different methodology and functionality. And, you know, one of the hardest problems this there is networking because, you know, we, we had to, uh, uh, you know, I had one customer, they basically said, look, we're, we're now in, in, in four different clouds and we have an, an audit for our firewall policy and we, we don't really know how to start because how do you, how you configure a firewall or those similar functionality in these different clouds is completely different. The capabilities are completely different. And, you know, thinking about this a little bit, we realized that's a real opportunity for us at, at VMware because today what NSX allows you to do, it allows you to essentially span a network across heterogeneous hardware, right? It can take a Cisco switch or an Arista switch or you know, any other switch underneath and NSX can create a virtual network across. So why can't we do the same thing with public clouds? Well, why can't you? It's so hard, isn't it? I mean, it's hard. People are, I haven't heard one person said, I'm moving workloads between Azure, Google, and uh, AWS. I haven't heard one person. So moving them is hard. And it's primarily hard because, because of the services, right? If, if you're just going in Amazon, um, many companies, they want to use the Amazon services. They have great services, you know, like their, their databases, their message queues and so on. But, but they all have proprietary interfaces. Once you use them, you pretty much can't switch around anymore. Um, now, there's other companies that, that are a little more disciplined about that. They're basically saying, look, uh, we have a whitelist of services. We have some abstraction layers in between. And uh, you know, I know one customer that started out on Amazon then moved to Google, so it's certainly possible. I think it'll be the minority. I think most customers, if they, if they build an application um, on one cloud, they'll stay there. But the, the interesting thing is that even if you stay in one cloud, uh, you have the problem of how do you create networks across these clouds? Right? How do you get consistent policy, consistent compliance? I think that's why NSX really shines. It's not about moving around workloads, but it's about giving the IT team powerful tools who can manage these workloads across all these clouds in the same way without so, getting the way of the developer. So I, as a technologist, where I mean, this is what I always like to look and squint through all the, the vendor uh, talk from the different clouds. Um, specifically Microsoft. Microsoft just seems like they've cobbled together their cloud. Google seems a little bit more pure on the technology side when they have their weaknesses, but also strengths there. And AWS uh, just is, is just great. Um, but again, if you use just AWS, then you got to go over here. Where, I mean, where's the hard just technical problem? Is it the database? Is it the middleware? I mean, where where is that line where something's going to be completely abstracted away as a service? So like, mm -hmm. yeah. at some point you have to have services that work together. Yeah. So it's some sort of standardization. Where's that hardened top? Uh, how far up the stack does that go? Is it the database? Is it just containers, so, Kubernetes, all yeah. this action? Well, I think we're, we're, we're looking at the future here, so here's my best guess, right? I mean, it, it, it certainly feels like the base virtualized 
um, you know, server abstraction. That's getting commoditized to some degree. And so very basic storage is getting commoditized. At the same time, we're seeing huge differentiation to this in, in terms of services on top, right? I mean, the, the, you know, Amazon has by far the largest catalog. Google has cheap storage. You know, Microsoft is very aggressive about licensing their own products on top of Azure. So I think what this will lead to is that, that what I think we're seeing is that customers are using different clouds for their specifics of best of breed properties, right? And the, the result is you're in multiple clouds and, and you know, that's I think where um, in, in, uh, in, the, in the next years, that'll be where many of these challenges come from, right? It's a little bit like the days from HP Unix versus SolarWinds versus AIX, I'm probably dating myself here, right? But uh, where, where you have silos, right? And how do you break up these well, silos? Well, and then those and, silos and were disrupted by Linux. I mean, you know, by AIX and some of these exactly. Unix yep. proprietary uh, mechanisms. Exactly, but x86, we suddenly had one common platform and then with virtualization you could, you could go across. Yeah. All right, so now if I'm a CXO, I got to look to the future as well. And the good news is I don't have to make these big upfront investments like I used to in the past, but I still got to make some sort of directionally correct um, decision. Yeah. But I don't want to make a decision where I'm going to foreclose benefits downstream. What, what advice would you give your friend who's a CTO or CXO at a company in terms of current move on the table? How do they, what's the next step? So look, I mean, the, the, the cloud is here and I think you should use it, right? There's, there's no question. Um, it's going to be a, a long transition. It's going to keep us busy for many years, right? I mean, the, 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 there's various predictions, but, but even the most optimistic ones, the, the, the majority of workloads will still be on-prem, you know, five years from now, possibly longer. Um, the, I think when you move into the cloud, do it in a thoughtful way, right? Experiment, but then think about how do you scale this? How do you make sure that, in, you know, to get your, your real production applications running up in the cloud, right? You have all the same compliance requirements, mm -hmm. security requirements, you know, operational requirements, cost requirements that you have on premises. Um, I think the, the biggest challenges for a CAO are probably in the, in the people organizations, right? How do I change my, my classic silos? How do I, uh, you know, get people- So personnel uh, is a big- Person, you know, I'm, I'm a techie, but I always think it's easier to change technology, technology than to change people, right? And, and really, leveraging clouds to the fullest potential means you have to change processes, you have to change. Well, Guido, uh, I was dating myself on theCUBE, certainly this, this uh, past week is my birthday, so that's one of the reasons ah, why. Nice. Congratulations. But <laughs> we're talking about the mainframe days, because I was breaking into the business in the, in the late 80s when you know, we, the emerging technology was um, you know, the OSI model, uh, mini computers and LANs and, and as you saw PCs, the mainframe guys were the old school guys clutching onto their budgets and ultimately didn't go away but reduced significantly down footprint wise. Yeah. And some people just would never give up. Correct. And some people yeah. were smart and said, Still hey, see them. Yeah. I better get on the, this networking protocol bandwagon. I'm not just going to use SNA for your IBM or DECnet if you were DEC. You got on to TCP IP, which then the rest is history. Yeah. We're in kind of a similar shift. What, I think it's true, yeah. What, what, if TCP IP was a disruptive enabler yeah. back then, what's the disruptive enabler today from your, your mind? Is that's, there one? That's a great question. Containers? I, I don't see, containers a little bit. I mean, the, the big difference I think between TCP is that TCP just connected existing infrastructure. Well, containers is really an infrastructure to build a different type of application. Right? The hard part about containers is not that uh, uh, you know, it's 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 difficult to learn. It's not right there. They're very easy to learn. It's that to uh, uh, you know, if you have a classic high availability on-premises app and you want to move it to containers, you probably have to change your app, right? You have to get away from a high availability model more to a distributed model. You yeah. know, that's more fault tolerant. So you have to retrain your people to build applications in a different way. Well, I guess the question that I'm you know just kind of riffing out loud with you on this one is a good conversation. Is that okay? I just don't want to get locked in. I'm Correct. a customer because. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to get locked into, back then, the networking protocol was the lock-in spec. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of tease out, how do I get the maximum choice, but yet the flexibility to do multiple clouds? Because yeah. if I Look want to switch from Amazon to Azure, or Azure to Amazon, or vice versa, I want to be able to do that pretty quickly. So if, if I mean, so first of all, I'm, I'm not sure, that there's two philosophies there, right? If you want to be able to switch between clouds, then yes, I would containerize things as much as I can, right? I would. Um, use abstraction layers for services as much as I can. Right? If you do all these things, you're leaving a fair amount of functionality on the table, though, right? I mean, it's like you know, you, the other approach I've seen is that people are saying, "Look, I'm going to go to Google because I want to use Google Translate for this application, and I'm going to go to Amazon because I like their, you know, next generation uh, relational database." Uh, or know, IBM has, has because they got Watson. Uh, IBM they got Watson exactly, right? And maybe Google uh, cheap storage or something like that. Right? I mean, there's this of best of breed um, applications. 
Um, and if you do that, right, uh, uh, then, then you sort of, so it's, it's as much about how do you connect as it is about. So APIs uh, or tokens or whatever mechanism. So if I take that example, Google Translate, yeah. IBM Blue Mix, that's yeah. clearly the differentiation that they're doing. Correct. So now how do I connect in? So, I mean, I think you're going to place at least some of your compute resources in each of these clouds, right? I think if, uh, if I talk to customers, the, the, every customer tells me they want to be in more than one cloud. Right? It's a very consistent message. And uh, you know, my prediction is a typical large enterprise in the future will be in five or six clouds. Um, because it's best of breed, because you know, once you're in, it's hard Their to switch. Their differentiation is unique to what they need. The differentiation, and, and, and once, you're, once you're in there, once you start using Google Translate, it's hard to switch, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard, hard to get, get All right, so here's the tough question on that one. So let's just take that forward. So you're, you've got a customer that wants to be in multiple clouds, makes total yeah. sense to me. Now, where's the data? Was the data set? Because now with real-time mobility, we just had yeah. the uh, end user computing guys on, great. Now I got to go get the data from Azure, is there a latency? So then, then it comes up the whole data architecture. Yeah. Is that where the whole NSX thing comes in? Where is uh, it? It does, I mean, the, the, I think the short answer is, look, moving data is much harder than moving code in, in the age of cloud, right? So the data is probably going to sit where it was close to where it was generated or you know, it's created. You have all your, your click stream from online advertising, it's probably going to sit in a Google server because that's where you know, it's easiest to get it from, you know, from your AdWords uh, um, account. And, uh, and so you do some processing there, and maybe your, your customer database is still sitting on-prem, you know, and you have your, your, some, some web-facing app on, on Amazon. It, again, it comes back to how do you connect these, right? The, yeah. and it's, it, if you look at what's how happening- How do they connect? How, how does a customer connect them today? Today? Yeah, what's today the Today it's mostly VPNs, you know, you have tunnels. I mean, I've, I've talked to customers that have hundreds of tunnels at this point, I think 600 is the, the record I've heard, 600 individually managed tunnels to different, different cloud apps. It's a complete nightmare, right, in, in terms of management. Um, so we need, we need we need tools to, to structure that in a, in a better way. And that's you know, something where we, we think we can help with NSX. Right, so talk about where VMware is at now. What's your roadmap? And as you look within the organization, as you look at cl cross cloud, which you can argue that if you believe what we just talked about, there will be a cross cloud architecture. Yes, absolutely. Where yes. is the state of the art today? What's shipping? What's available? What's the real? What's kind of future? So, so at this point, everything you've seen are tech previews. Right? We haven't announced any ship dates yet for, for cross cloud offering. Uh, you know, what we've demoed is, uh, is a couple of different products. I mean, you know, we're starting with, with NSX, as you mentioned it. So, so basically, it's, it's a SaaS version of NSX. And, and by the way, there's a similar functionality coming for on-prem version. So you can have either. Um, if you want to install it yourself, you, you can still do that. And basically, it allows you to stretch networks across clouds. So I can say, you know, I have a couple of workloads in Amazon, a couple of workloads in Azure, they're now on a private network. Or, you know, a couple of networks on-premises now on a private network. And we can not only, uh, you know, have your, you can have your own layer two and layer three networking and load balancing firewall, and we can actually encrypt these networks, right? And so even if somebody hypothetically would break into Amazon's network, they could no longer get access to the data. Right? It's an additional layer of security um, you know, to make your applications more, more resilient. So you guys can create kind of that overlay, if you will, between the networks Correct. and then control the transit cross? Exactly, I mean, the same way how we create overlay networks in the data center today, in the future, we're doing it across clouds. All right, what's the coolest thing that you're working on right now? Uh, you know, I, look, I am super excited <laughs> about the cross-cloud services. They, they have the, we have the, the networking product, right? We have a, a, a costing and monitoring product, you know, which is very cool. We short of a migration service that actually allows you to move a workload across clouds. Um, you know, we have, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan actually of Arkin, which is network monitoring, so it gives you a nice visualization of how all the traffic flows, or at least you, you understand what's happening, right? Um, this whole transition of VMware from you know, on-prem to, to providing SaaS services for the public cloud. I mean, this, this to me is the future and I'm very excited about it. Yeah, I mean, we've always been talking about uh, inter-cloud and kind of a goofy on inter-networking and, and this really seems to be the interoperability question comes on the table. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting things I want to get your thoughts on, um, Tuesday night at, uh, in uh, Vegas last week during James Hamilton's uh, presentation, James is the, the, the infrastructure know, guy yeah, over great. Yeah. at, um, great guy. Um, he talked about a bunch of different things. One in particular that I want to get your thoughts on, as you can see, Amazon's essentially putting their own data center in the cloud at large scale. Yeah. But one of the things he mentioned, he says, when people touch the packet, you want to reduce the number of people touching the packet, mainly because of latency and, and, and yeah. QoS-like stuff. Um, do you believe in the same concept and does VMware take that kind of approach to managing how many people touch the packet? I think, I think it actually makes sense to me, right? I mean, the, the, if, you have, if you have a complex network architecture, we have many hops in between, right? Uh, you know, your latency is going to go up, your, your transfer rates are going to go down. I mean, I think that the philosophy we have at, at VMware is to say, look, aim for, for very simple networks underneath, right? Create a simple ECM 
uh, layer three fabric, right? You know, over, it's, it's cheap, so over provision, uh, you know, it, it, to the max. Uh, that gives you low latency, it gives you high throughput, right? And then the only other point where you touch is either in the, in the uh, hypervisor or in the, in the instance, right? And um, in this one touch point in software, right, you do all your firewalling, load balancing, and so on, right? And unless you have, sp if you have specifics of high security needs, then you may have put a Palo Alto or a five in between. But in many cases, you can just do that sort of on, on the shortest path, right? So I think, I think we're, we're aligned there. I think this is the, the architecture of the future. What's your thoughts on the, um, on the misconceptions that most people, when you look at the, some of the press articles out there, or just common conventional wisdom around cloud, and what do you see that, that people should um, take note of that's either not true or a misconception around the reality of what's happening? I mean, is there anything that jumps right out now? at you? Yeah, I mean, is it whether it's cloud washing yeah. or some sort of, you know, debunk something. I mean, help us <laughs> debunk you know, something. identify something and say, <laughs> um, that's not true. Look, it, it, it's in, in, in these sort of big transitions, right? It, it, what always happens is that the future is here, it's not equally distributed yet, right? So, so people are on completely different pages in terms of, you know, to what extent they've embraced it, understand it, and so on, right? I think, you know, one thing is, um, I'm probably projecting here. You know, when I started, uh, got started with the cloud. I mean, my, my first thought was, look, if a customer moves to the cloud, all of the IT problems disappear, right? You know, everything is managed. You don't need to update things anymore. The IT department is, is useless, right? And um, uh, you know, bo boy, was I wrong, right? You know, once you start to actually people who've run cloud applications at scale, right? I mean, they. They still have to worry about security, about yeah. compliance. You know, they have to manage cost. You know, there's uh, there's legacy apps, right? I mean, nobody's thinking about this right now, but you know, everything is new and shiny. Yeah. But you know, after a couple of years, an app is in legacy mode, and the IT department will support it, right? And now you can't patch it anymore because you don't have developers. You need to have put other compensating controls around it. All these things, so debunking, they're still you, there. You're debunking the fact that IT goes away with the cloud. In Correct. fact, it becomes more relevant, to your point. It, 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 you know, I think it's just as relevant as before, right? That the challenges, in fact, are mostly the same. You probably need less people to plug hardware, but that's about the only difference. I was at, uh, and one of, the, one of my goals at reInvent this year was to understand what's going on in the startup community, so I went to all the VC after hours parties where all the information comes in. But here's a, here's a quote I heard from one of the VCs when I asked him, hey, how is your infrastructure investments going these days? Yeah. Um, of course, he's rolling his eyes because it's not a good environment for infrastructure. And he says, yeah, it's a bummer, but the plumbers are turning into machinists. Mm -hmm. And his plumbers meaning network guys, right? Yeah. Um, and machine is becoming their operating stuff. Yeah, so, yeah. and again, that's. Do you agree with that th statement? I mean, it's a shift. I think of, it's true. I mean, the, the the currently a lot of what we do is way too manual, right? We we need to automate this. We need to move this to a higher level. If if, if it always shocks me, you know, when I was a grad student twenty years ago, I was uh, I was doing network um, uh, configuration, uh, you know, and it was like enable configure, and then you hand configure every switch, you know, with your new VLAN. And today. We're still often doing exactly the same thing, right? This this hasn't changed, and, and this has to change. We need to get to a point where it's more automated, where you know things are scripted, you know, where where things are managed at a higher level. So I think I thought DevOps was supposed to solve all this. I, I, to some degree, yes. I mean, <laughs> it, we, 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 it, it gets us closer. I mean, I think actually it's interesting for for networking. I think that there will be some ops. They'll stay ops, yeah. but it'll be automated ops, right? I mean, it's it's DevOps in the sense that you have somebody who has a, a bit more of a developer mindset, and you know, it's not not a PhD in computer science, but you know, it knows Python and, and likes scripting, right? And uh, you know, but uh, it's probably not, I don't. There's there's many challenges in networking that I think will never be completely absorbed into Dev, just because networking is part networking's justification is there's a second layer of defense, right? In case something goes wrong, the application you have a second layer that'll detect yeah. exploits and so on. So, but but I think in terms of in terms of skill set, yes, DevOps is the future. Kind of make things addressable. Final question for you, 2017. What are you looking for next year? What do you think is going to evolve on the tech landscape and the tech as a technologist as you look out over 2017? What's going to become more clear to folks? What might change and for a positive? Look, I think we'll we'll see uh, a, a lot more cloud everything, right? I think we'll see enterprises move to the cloud, gain experience with the cloud. Some enterprises move back, you know, just because reality is setting in, uh, you know. Um, but but by and large, I mean, it'll be a net movement to the cloud. And it'll be a lot more sophisticated in how they use the cloud. I think enterprise will start to really understand the complexity of managing a cloud or, or several clouds, right? I think IT teams, as a result, will start pulling back. Uh, some some control from the business unit and saying like okay guys you know and it was all fun and games when when you know there was no mission critical apps but give us a data breach or two and then you know we're we're back in in, in business here having to protect uh, you know everything that's running up there um, I mean and, and the other thing is uh, containers I think containers will be will continue to be a huge yeah I mean I, I agree with you I think it's going still going to be an engineering game you still got to engineer the solution whether it's in yeah. the cloud or on and certainly the hybrid points we, of that 
we, we as software developers, as software companies, we have a lot of product to build, right? What we have right now does not solve all of our customers' needs. And well, keep up the good work, Guido. Thanks for spending some time here. We are on the ground here at VMware's corporate headquarters in beautiful Palo Alto, great campus. Talking tech, talking about cross cloud. I'm John Furrier, your host of On the Ground here at theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Oh,